Casanova's facing 60 years after pleading guilty to drug and racketeering charges. He distanced himself from his old crew, then just days later, his face got slashed in prison. And today we're breaking down the entire story. On Thursday, June 16th, Casanova was sitting in the Essex County Correctional Facility when a dude named Ulysses Lugo came at him with a blade. Casanova's face got slashed up, but he didn't just sit there and take it. Cass started fighting back, and that's when Lugo tried to run off but got chased down by Cass and his homies. By the time the guards got there to break the situation up, Cass had allegedly already cut Lugo several times in the face too. It's not clear why Lugo went after Cass like that, but rumors are flying that it's related to a letter Casanova sent to the judge in this case a few days ago. He was accused of being a shot caller for the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang. And in 2020, he got taken down in a RICO indictment with 17 other Gorilla Stone affiliates. He pleaded not guilty at first, but later he took a deal and pleaded guilty to being involved with a shooting in 2020, a robbery in 2018, and selling between 100 and 400 kilos of weed. Even though Cass copped a plea deal, he's still facing 60 years in prison. And last week, he sent a letter to the judge where he talks about giving up the street life. Cass started the letter off by taking responsibility for everything in his past but he told the judge he never had anyone to show him a better path so he has to learn how to survive the streets by himself. He also brought up how he's been working with young people in the streets over the last few years and trying to lead them down a better path so they don't end up like he did. Casanova came up in the Flatbush area of Brooklyn and put both feet in the trenches as a teenager. He dropped out of school in eighth grade and was in the streets full time and it didn't take long for it to start catching up with him. In 2006, he got booked on a robbery charge at the age of 19 and didn't come home until almost eight years later. Life on the inside wasn't easy. Cass has to fight every day just to survive, and he told DJ Vlad that he probably sliced up around 12 dudes while he was locked up. In his letter to the judge, Casanova said he had to act the part, but all he wanted to do was end it all. This wasn't the first time that a suicidal thoughts had been brought up to the judge. Back in 2022, when he pleaded guilty, Cass told the judge that he had been put on suicide watch a few days before and explained that he had attempted to kill himself a couple of times when he was a teenager. It sounds like he's been trying to get away from the street life for a long time, and he wrote, I am telling you and anyone that will listen that I wanted out before I was arrested and I am out. When he finally came back in 2014, Cass knew he had to switch up how he moved. He actually linked up with ASAP Rocky while they were cellmates together on Rikers Island. And in 2016, Cass hopped in the booth and started dropping tracks. His first single, Don't Run, had his name buzzing in the city. And a few months later, he signed a deal with Memphis Bleak on his warehouse music group label under Rock Nation. Next, he dropped an EP in 2018 and his debut album in 2019, and that's when Casanova realized he could make a difference through his music. In the letter, he said, I learned through my music career that people will listen and that I don't need to associate myself with a gang to succeed. I don't need to associate with a gang even if I don't succeed. But even though he was trying to make a change, Cass admits that he kept pushing the gangster image to promote his career. In the RICO indictment, they accused him of being a high-ranking member of the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation and calling the shots. But Cass wrote, I don't care what the government tells you, I'm telling you the truth. I was not involved in the daily activities of this gang. I wasn't anyone's boss. Cass wanted out, but he let the gang use his name for promotion. And he said, what I was, and I regret this, was a person that they could use to promote themselves in a world I swear to you I was trying to leave. He also apologized for the 2018 robbery charge. Cass was at a diner with some friends when a woman started recording him on her phone. Casanova allegedly snatched the phone out of her hand, and that's when another Gorilla Stone affiliate got involved and choked her unconscious. When it first went down, rumors said that Cass ordered the dude to choke her out, but last year he told the court that he didn't tell him to do it and that he actually picked the woman up off the ground and handed her phone back when the situation was over. In the letter to the judge, Casanova apologized again for everything that happened and said, I am sorry for my past. I am sorry for the robbery, but I am telling you, I acted out of impulse and taking the lady's phone and deleting the videos, but that is all I wanted to do. He said that he never wanted anyone to get hurt and told the judge again that he didn't order the other dude to put hands on her. While he was pleading guilty last year, the judge asked prosecutors what kind of evidence they had on Cass. At first, a lot of fans thought it would be better for him to take it to trial, but it turns out the untouchable Gorilla Stones had some major leaks in the group. The cops had a tape of a jail call between two members where they were talking about how Casanova always carries a gun. And on another call, someone in the gang said they were worried that the way Cass was acting would hurt his rap career. Cass also admitted to being involved in a shooting that went down at a house party in July 2020. He told the judge that he was invited to a mansion with his wife and some other friends and he started shooting dice. Cass lost a couple bands that was supposed to go to the whole table, but when he handed it over, one of the dudes tried to pocket the whole stack and a fight broke out. Someone passed Casanova a strap and it allegedly went off during all the chaos. It's been pretty clear that he's trying to leave the streets behind him, but that's allegedly what got him sliced up. 
At the end of his letter to the judge, Cass said, I am telling you and anyone that will listen, I am no longer a member of Gorilla Stone or any other gang. Rumors say a high-ranking member wanted to punish Cass for trying to leave the gang, but there's no evidence to back that up right now. The rumors probably started because of another Gorilla Stone member named Brandon Neves who took a plea deal too. Neves was caught on wiretap with two other Gorilla Stones who were planning on stabbing other members of the gang who weren't holding it down while they were locked up. He was already on probation for ordering a different stabbing, so it's pretty clear that the Stones are willing to get people shanked if they cross the gang. There's a chance that Casanova got attacked by his old crew, but others think he was stabbed over rumors about him snitching. Back in 2021, a rapper named Troy Ave posted paperwork that allegedly proved Casanova snitched on his homie over a murder investigation. It's not clear if the paperwork was even legit though, and right now, nobody knows for sure why Cass got sliced up. Casanova fought his way out of the trenches and tried to leave it all behind him, but the drama never left and now it's getting more serious than ever. It seems like Cass really does want to change his life and use his rap career to keep other people out of the streets. He's been affiliated with the untouchable Gorilla Stones since he was a teenager, so he knew that putting the letter out there could have violent consequences and he still put it out there, which proves how serious he is about the situation. Unfortunately, the judge didn't feel like the apology was enough. On June 27th, news broke that Casanova had been handed down a 15-year sentence. Cash tried to convince everyone he was changing for the better, but an attorney named Damian Williams said that he played a big part in the Gorilla Stone crew and helped them expand all over the country. Fans were hoping that the judge would take it easier on Cash during the sentencing, but at least he didn't get hit with the full 60 years he was facing. If he keeps his head down and stays out of trouble on the inside, he could get a few years taken off for good behavior, but that's gonna be hard to do when he's got dudes coming at him with blades. Hopefully Cash stays safe in there, but tap in for updates because this story definitely isn't over yet.